Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Ya'ashai, Ba'ashem, Ha'kadosh. Yahweh being the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, Ba'ashem, in the name of Yahweh Shai, Holy uh, He saves, He delivers, it's the name of the only begotten Son. All right, Ha'kadosh, Holy Spirit. Double honors to our elders and apostles of great motion, every well, peace, and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at the one that lets through the spirit of fire, y'all, but shy Lord, when this video was edifying, man. And I just wanted to go into a lesson. Pretty much going into how the Lord is shortening the days, man. Y'all, but shy is shortening the days for his elect sake. So through the spirit, I'm sure to go ahead and knock out these precepts, Lord, when this video is edifying. This is Jeremiah chapter 1, so now verse 12. And it says, uh, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten my word to perform it. You see? So the Lord said he's going to hasten his word to perform it, man. The Lord is going to perform everything that he has said in the scriptures, you know, that has yet to come to pass, man. Because people think just because the prophecies aren't being fulfilled, you know, to the degree and the rate that they want them to be fulfilled, that they're never going to come to pass. But the scriptures say that the Most High... Is not a man that he should lie, man. So if the Lord, if the Lord tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it in his time. Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, right? So the Lord is saying, look, even though it might be tarry, you know, you ain't seen your house shall come back yet. Yeah, Jacob Trump might not have that popped off yet. And it's full spectrum. Wait for it, man, because this this truth, these prophecies and this truth is going to surely come to pass, man. Okay, it's not going to tarry, meaning it's never it's, it's never going to not come, man. These try these this truth, the things written in the scriptures will come to pass, man. And how about Shai will make good on his word? Let me get that scripture real quick. This is the book of Numbers 23 and 19. This is the most high is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? You see, so the Lord, when he tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it, man. And that's the thing. People think just because the Lord ain't judging this world on a mass scale, like the times that we're coming into, that it's okay to be continuing in their wickedness. But guess what? The Lord has these words written because they are faithful and true, man. Okay? Second Ezra 15 and 1 says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And that's what we're doing through the Spirit of our Yahweh Shemashai. And a part of the words of prophecy is that the Lord say he was going to shorten the days, man. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true, right? They are faithful and true. That the prophecy is written Within the scriptures are faithful and true, and they will come to pass, man. All right, everything the Lord set out to be done will be done. And we're not worried about if Jake believes or not, because the scriptures say, um, so what if some did not believe? Shall, the, shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid, man. So just because you don't believe doesn't mean that the Lord ain't going to make it come to pass, man. Second Ezra 15 and verse 3, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. You see? So the Lord is telling you, look, if you don't believe in these words, you're going to die, man. Because the Lord is only dealing with the righteous who has faith and works, man. And he's going to have grace and mercy upon those. And they're going to be delivered from the times of trouble. But for those that don't believe the words of Yahweh Bashman Shai, they're going to be in pitiful case. Now, I want to go ahead and get this real quick. Because when the Lord speaks something, it's a process, you know? Now, the Lord could speak something and make it appear, you know, in an in 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 immediate time. But the Lord is, is building his word up, so to speak. This is Isaiah 55. And I'll just start at verse 6. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Right. Seek you out while he may be found, while you still have time, while the Lord is near, man. Because... 
times are going to come where you're not going to be able to see the men of the Lord on the highways and byways. The videos on the YouTube is going to be shut down. All right. You're not going to be able to access the Internet and the word because there's going to be a famine of the word. It's not going to be easily accessible like it is right now, man. Like it was during the time of Samuel, the prophet, what it said, that the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Right now, it's an open vision. But the Lord is getting ready to make the men of the Lord's roof cleave to their mouth, man. Or their tongue cleave to the roof of their mouth, rather. And the Lord is going to uh, shut them up. So what are you going to do in those times if you ain't right? We have a bunch of Messiah. That's why while we still have opportunity, we ought to seek the Lord. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. and He will have mercy upon him and to our power for he will abundantly pardon. Right. Forsake your own wicked ways and return to Yahweh Basham al For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Right. The Lord's thoughts are not our thoughts, man. He's on a way higher level frequency than we are, man. So you have to just trust in the fact that whatever the Lord says is going to happen, it's going to happen, whether you see it or not. Okay? So it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, man. Yeah, the Lord... He's on a higher vibration than us, man. That's why it's important to seek to be on the, the level of Yahweh Bashem Shai as far as when it comes to walking spiritually, not walking carnally. You know? Like sure say, our conversation is in heaven. All right? And like Yahweh Shai said, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Man, we got to be in the same spirit as Yahweh Shai, being from above. Not thinking carnally, man. Not thinking fleshly. And if you have spiritual eyes, you can see that this world is, is crumbling. So it says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Right, so the Lord's word it's not going to return into him void. It's a process. Just like how the rain comes down and the snow and returns not thither, meaning the Lord's words don't come back to him in vain. <coughs> but what does it do? It waters the earth and makes it fruit to bring forth in bud. So it's the same thing with the words and the prophecies of the Lord. He's calling forth the plagues, and they're not going to be drawn back, man. The Lord is calling forth the plagues, and they're going to manifest. And we're seeing them manifest. As he's telling these times, man. The gas prices going up, food shortages all around the world, all around the world, uh, inflation, lack of jobs, lack of labor, workforce, you know, because people are hiring, but a lot of people don't want to work, you know, um, wild beasts changing their places, we're approaching a famine, we're approaching a lack of resources, a shortage on resources left, you can see that we're at the end, it's, it's plain. It's plain. But a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. And you can see that the Lord is showing in the days. He's hastening to perform his word. You know, because Jake thinks that the Lord, uh, he says something, he's not going to make it come to pass. That's what it is. Jake Jake, Jake really be like, well, the Lord ain't coming back. Well, when the Lord come back, that'll be another 500 years or 50 years from now or 100 years from now. Jake don't ever see how it's coming back in their lifetime. But little do they know that the Lord is on his way sooner than they think, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 12. Starting at verse 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth? That's what it's like what that's what Jake thinks, man. They think the days are prolonged. They think that Yahweh Shemeshah is not gonna make good on his word. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord Power, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord Power. Yep. And one thing about it is the reason why the Lord's word uh, is taking a process of time to be fulfilled is because that the Lord is merciful, man. And he's giving people a space of repentance, 
a window to repent. But that window of grace and mercy is 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 um shutting, man, at a steady rate. It's shutting. And a lot of people they're not gonna take heed to it. And you've been in lately through the spirit, something that I personally have been peeping. You know, I'm 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 sure your other brothers might agree, but something that I've personally been absor- observing through the spirit is that the judgment has been coming down quicker, man. The judgments have been coming down faster. For instance, you do something. Okay, not saying that the Lord ain't merciful, but you do something, a lot of times the Lord gets you for it, man. Soon, you know, he's not prolonging his judgment anymore. And as far as I'm saying, do something, you know, you might transgress in a certain way or slip up and the Lord chastise you quickly, man. You know, that's something I've been observing in the spirit. Now, I'm not saying it's always like that because sometimes the Lord winks at our ignorance, but at the same time, I've been peeping that in the spirit. And it doesn't have to be a big chastisement, but one thing that I've been peeping in the spirit is that the Lord has been coming down quicker. I'm going to show you what? That the grace and the mercy of the Lord, all right, even though it never fails, all right, the Lord is is is, is not letting people get away with a pass that much anymore. You see, you see what I'm saying? And the Lord is always going to be merciful because he's a balanced judge. But at the same time, you know, he's executing judgment much faster. That's pretty much what I'm saying. So it says... And again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, the house, day of the house of Israel say the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesied of the times of, that are far off. And that's what Jake thinks. They think that the Lord is never going to come back. But really, they're putting away the day of the Lord. Amos 6 and 3, ye that put far away the evil day and cause the seed of violence to come near. That's our people, man. They put far away the evil day. Okay? They put far away the day of the Lord. Because they don't want the Lord to come back, man. Because they know that they've been living life wickedly. This is Isaiah 5 and 19. Let me get this real quick. Isaiah 5 and 19. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. Right, so Jake is like, shit, when's God coming back? You know, we I want to see it. You know, they've been saying God been coming back ever since I was little. My grandma been telling me, you know, the Lord is coming. Well, where is he at? Let us see it, man. Okay, that's Jake. But the, the but the thing is, man, Jake thinks they're all big and bad, and they want the Lord to come back so quick. But really, Jake not ready for that, man. Because when the Lord pull up on them, they're gonna be feeling through as hell, and they're gonna flee away. Let me get another precept. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Right. And that's what this, that's the spirit of Jake comes in, man. They think just because Yahweh Bashmel Shai, you know, isn't judging them and ex executing judgment upon them speedily, they think that he ain't never coming back, man. But they're sadly mistaken. The Lord is coming back sooner than we know it. And that's why it's important to always stay on point in the spirit. Zephaniah 1 and 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles. Right. The Lord, he's putting the light. He's exposing everybody's works, man. He's putting everybody's works to the test to see who's really about him and who is not. And the Lord is exposing and revealing many hearts, man. He's revealing the secret hidden things, man. Because a lot of people think that they could just creep in the faith. And try to stay under the radar and not be detected, you know, but still be on their wickedness, but try to feign themselves like they're really about this truth. Well, guess what? Yahweh Bashman Shai is going to reveal everybody's heart. He's putting a light on everybody's works. The Lord is going to expose everyone, whether your works be of righteousness or wickedness. It says, and punish the men that are settled on their leaves. That's seeing their heart. Right. Meaning what? Punish the ones that are not watching. Because we're all supposed to be watching, man. We're all supposed to be circumspect, watching the times that we're in, all right, paying attention to what's going on around us, okay? But the Lord said he's going to punish them that are settled in their leaves, the ones that are not paying attention, man, the ones who are supposed to be holding post, and they're not doing what they're supposed to be told to do. You know, they're not being circumspect, they're not being a watchman like the Lord appointed them to be. It says that say in the heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil, right? Because they don't think that the Lord is ever going to fulfill his word. They said, oh, the Lord ain't going to 
pretty much they're saying the Lord ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to do, do good nor evil. They don't think that the Lord is going to do anything, man. Because they don't believe he's ever coming back. But when he pulls up on them, what are they going to do in that time? You know, and that's really because a lot of these people lack patience, man. They lack patience. Let me get this precept. Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Starting at verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. They're going to be stuck, man. Not knowing what the hell to do. Okay? When the Lord visits them. That's why Yahweh I spoke about that evil servant that said in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Meaning what? Oh, Yahweh I ain't back yet, man. So, you know, I'll just go back into the world. Maybe I'll come back into the truth a year or two from now. I mean, I still want to go be a rapper. I still want to go be, uh, you know, a ball player. Yahweh I ain't coming back yet, so it ain't what it is. That's the type of approach Jake has, man. Matthew 24, starting at... Uh, Matthew 24, starting at um, 49. I shall start at verse 48. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right, so... If you don't want to stay on your watch, you don't want to stay stuck respect for the Lord. You don't want to stay on fire for this truth, man. You know, not being complacent in this thing. Then guess what? You know, the Lord, he is going to destroy you. If you're not being on fire in this thing, constantly on your watch. You can't be, oh, yeah, no, the Lord ain't come back yet. So it is what it is. That's going to lead you to death, man. Because ultimately, really, you think that the Lord ain't coming back at all. And that's why you want to continue in your wickedness. Because you don't think the Lord is going to. You don't think judgment day is sooner than what you think. Judgment day is sooner than what you think. But you don't know that. You're thinking in your heart that the Lord ain't never coming back. This is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right. Just because niggas be like, oh, I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Since I was this age. And nah, 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 nah. God ain't judged me. God ain't, nah, nah, nah. God ain't never punished me. So what you talking about is a sin. God ain't judging because the Most High is merciful, man. But don't think for one second that you're going to get away scot free, man. Let me get that scripture real quick. It's Rock Ecclesiastes 16 11. It says, And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. That's right. The Lord is mighty to forgive and to judge, man. That's why the scriptures say, Make no turn to, uh, turn to the Lord and put not out from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord go forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, man. And the scriptures don't say, Say not, you know, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins because he's merciful. Because why? Because mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners. Roughly paraphrasing, man. That's Sirach the fifth chapter, around verse six, if I'm not mistaken. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do it evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before Yahweh Bashmael Shah. All right? So, hey, you get this. You're just walking yourself into destruction because you're not fearing the Lord. You don't think that the Lord is ever going to make good on his word, but he will. And he's performing it. He's shortening the days for his elect's sake. You know, time is flying by. The Lord is making good on his word. Matthew 24, starting at verse um, 22, says, I said of 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Right. And that's the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Okay. Great tribulation. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should be, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's right, man. So, hey, 
the times we're coming into, the tribulation that we're coming to, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time of trouble the world has never seen before, man. Imagine every post-apocalyptic movie, every apocalyptic movie, uh, uh, times a million, and, and jumble it all in one box. That's Jacob's trouble for you, man. All types of calamity, famine, mass bloodshed, death by the sword, death by wild beasts, um, strange calamities, natural disasters, okay? All these types of different things, man. Cannibalism, you know, social unrest, civil unrest. These are the times we're coming into. So it says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened, man. And if I'm not mistaken, there was an article that came out, all right, recently saying how the days, the earth is spinning the fastest it's ever spun before. And that a minute is now 59 seconds instead of 60 seconds. Now, you might have some person say, oh, it's just one second difference. But you have to understand, that's a big difference when you think about it. You have to understand how much of a difference that is. And 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 who's to say that it's going to stay that way, man? The Lord can make it go even faster. You know? But the earth is now spinning and rotating the fastest it's ever been. So now a minute, all right? The measurement of time of a minute is now 59 seconds. It's officially now 59 seconds. I'm going to show you that Yahweh Bashim Shai is truly shortening the days. He's making good on his word. Second Ezra, chapter two. All right, because the Lord, He's patiently waiting to destroy Esau's ass as well, man. But He has to make sure His word gets fulfilled. Second Ezra two and thirteen. Go and ye shall receive. Meaning, go and do this work, and we're gonna receive, um, you know, our reward. It says, pray for a few days unto you, and that's what we've been doing through the Spirit. We've been praying for the Lord to shorten the days. It says that ye that that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch, right? Yahweh Shai said that in his father's house are many mansions, and the Lord has gone to prepare a place for us, man. It says, So we just have to stay on our watch, you know, in this thing of ours, man. We can't be settled on our leaves. It says, Take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good, for I live, saith the Lord. Right. The Lord is gonna break the wickedness of this world. And a part of that is him shortening the days so that their rulership comes to an end. The Lord said he was going to early destroy the wicked, man. Meaning he's going to shorten the days, man. Look at the scripture. Psalms 101 and verse 8. It says, actually, I'll start at verse. I'll start at verse 1. Psalms 101 and 1. It's Psalm of David. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within mine house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside and shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso priv privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. It says, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. And Esau is the number one teller of lies, man. He, like like you say, he was the father of lies, man. <laughs> you know? So... He's not going to tarry in the Lord's sight. He's not going to be waiting long in the Lord's sight. The Lord is going to early destroy his ass, man. Verse 8, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. And these devils are inhabiting the city of the Lord. These devils are in our own homeland, man. And the Lord's going to make them pay for that. So, you know, I just wanted to get some precepts on that. The Lord is short in the days for the elect's sake, man. Yahweh Bashem Shai brought this on this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Shai Kodash. That will honor the apostles of the great news from the Rugal. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, I'm the Baba Ball.